So a little while ago, I made a video where I created some new Pokemon designs that were meant to show what Pokemon that have secret true forms, like Mimikyu for instance, could actually look like if we were able to someday see those secret true forms. This video was a lot of fun to do, it was a fun topic to explore, and you guys seemed to really enjoy it. So I thought we would do it once again today with some more Pokemon that have some secret true forms, and in particular, some special ones, because today we are going to be highlighting the true forms of the legendary beasts. As we get into these original forms for the Legendary Beasts, I am very grateful and happy to say that they were made thanks in part to today's amazing sponsor, Ridge Wallet. So, I have been using a Ridge Wallet myself for several years at this point, and I can confidently say that it is the best wallet that I have ever used, and it's not even close. Like, I'm genuinely serious, guys. This wallet blows any traditional wallet out of the water. It makes your wallet way more low profile and easy to carry, and it's just better. And this isn't even something that Ridge has told me to say. I am just saying it because I have experienced it myself. And I've enjoyed my wallet that much. They also have key cases as well that do the same thing for your keys. And keys are notoriously messy and jangly, so that's going to be a godsend as well. The wallets also come in a ton of different styles, they have a lifetime warranty, so you're literally never gonna have to buy another wallet again, and you can even test drive it for 99 days and get a full refund if you don't like it. You can even get 10% off of your order on top of all of this as well by using the link in the description and code HOOPS at checkout and showing Ridge some love through that link even helps out the channel as well. So like, this is just an amazing offer all the way around for what is truly one of my most favorite items that I use myself all the time. So check that out with the link below, and a big thank you to Ridge for supporting the channel. Now, if you're a Pokemon fan watching this video, you probably already know the backstory behind the Legendary Beasts, but just to give a quick summary, the Legendary Beasts all come from the Burned Tower in Ecrutic City in the Johto region, where, as unknown, nameless Pokemon, they all died in the burning of the Burned Tower, but then were resurrected by Ho-Oh after the fire of the tower was put out as Entei, Raikou, and Swift. Suicune. However, that's not what these Pokemon were initially. They were originally something different and were brought back as these legendary Pokemon, essentially meaning they were much more normal and non-legendary originally. That's pretty much all we know about these Pokemon though, because the story is very careful not to give us any more information, and it's very heavily emphasized that these Pokemon are nameless and unknown. There's a popular theory about the identity of these Pokemon that has been around for a while that states that they could be Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon. However, despite what some people may think, that is only a theory at this time. It has not been confirmed in any way whatsoever. And personally, I think it would be a lot cooler if these were brand new Pokemon. And I think if they were ever actually revealed to us in a future game, that they would would end up being new Pokemon, just because that would be a heck of a lot more interesting, and it would also allow Game Freak to capitalize a lot more on this interesting story if they ever did decide to explore it. So that is why I am going to be creating new Pokemon in this video to show what these nameless Pokemon could look like if we ever get to see them someday, and first off, why don't we go ahead and start with the original form of Entei. This little guy is known as Enashi, and there has been a lot of thought that has gone into this Pokemon's design, as well as the designs of the other two original Legendary Beasts. The artwork for them was also drawn by my very good friend Alestava076, and he obviously does amazing work, so be sure to check him out with the links in the description. 
As I said though, everything about these Pokemon that I'm going to present to you guys today was really intricately thought out, and I personally believe they do a really good job of making this story come full circle within these designs. First off, you might notice that Inashi has a very Eevee-lution-like appearance to it, and that is actually intentional. Since, as I said, the popular theory about these nameless Pokémon is that they could be some of the Eeveelutions, I wanted to go ahead and use the Eeveelution body type as a basis for these Pokémon to sort of pay homage to that theory since it is so prevalent within the community. This kind of body type for these Pokémon also makes a lot of sense as well, because they're obviously intended to be the original versions of the legendary beasts, who themselves are meant to be very ambiguous in terms of what exactly they are based on. And that is kinda what you have going on with the Eevees as well, so it just ended up as a perfect fit kind of situation that not only worked well, but also has some meaning to it. There are also some other interesting things going on with Anashi's design as well, as not only does it have subtle similarities with Entei's design, showing what it is ultimately going to grow into, but it also has some subtle references to Entei's beta design too, such as its tail and the flame cuffs that are on its feet, which come from Beta Entei. And that makes a lot of sense to include here, not only because this is essentially a second form of Entei, but because this is also essentially a past form of Entei. So using elements from a design of Entei that existed in the past for this past original form of Entei just makes perfect sense, and it also allows this Pokémon to look really cool as well. I also like how those elements were subtly added in to where they are there, but they don't overtake the design too much and still allow this Pokémon to be its own thing. Anashi, just like Entei, is also a pure fire-type Pokémon, and when it comes to its name, I'm actually going to save the explanation for its name until the end, because it connects to the names of the other two original Legendary Beasts that I have created for this video, and they actually have a lot of intricacy and detail to them, so I'm going to save that explanation for the end. With that said though, let's shift gears a little bit and take a look at what the original form of Raikou could look like. This is Raikoshi, and just like Enashi, it is following the exact same themes in order to put together its design. It's got the Eeveelution-like body, it too has beta elements from the beta design of Raikou, namely in its tail, just like Enashi, and in its ears. It is also electric type, as you might expect, and once again, we are going to save the explanation of its name, Raikoshi, for the end of the video so I can explain all three names together and how they all connect together. Design-wise though, I think Raikoshi turned out fantastic, and while it's really, really hard for me to choose, this one might be my favorite of the three. And you guys are definitely gonna have to let me know your favorite of the three as well in the comments below. Let's go ahead and move on, though, to the original form of Suicune, or as I have named it, Suirashi. Suirashi is, of course, what I imagined the original form of Suicune could look like, and honestly should look like if we ever get to see it in some kind of future Pokémon game. I honestly think it, as well as all of these other designs, have a really cute and cool look to them that I feel like would generate a lot of hype if they were actually the real thing and appeared in a Legends Johto game or something like that. It is also continuing the themes of the other original Legendary Beasts, namely that it's got the Eeveelution-like body style, it is borrowing elements from the beta version of its counterpart, Suicune, namely in that fluffy tail, and of course, it also matches Suicune's type, as it is also a water type too. Why don't we go ahead and get into the names now, because these names that I have created for these Pokémon, I actually put quite a lot of thought into, and they ended up becoming quite intricate, and I'm pretty proud of them, but they do require some explanation. 
So as stated earlier, the three names of these Pokemon are Inashi, Raikoshi, and Suirashi. The first thing that you probably notice is that their names all share the prefixes of their counterparts. Suirashi comes partially from Suicune, and Nashi comes partially from Entei, and Raikoshi comes partially from Raiko. These words also apply to these Pokemon individually though, as they are simply the Japanese terms for flame, thunder, and water, respectively. The other thing you may have noticed about these Pokemon's names is that they sound very Japanese, and that is intentional, because the second half of the Legendary Beasts' names also come from Japanese terms, and those Japanese terms all translate to something that essentially means Emperor or Monarch. So the names Entei, Suicune, and Raiko essentially and roughly translate to Flame Emperor, Thunder Emperor, and Water Emperor. So when it came to the names of their original counterparts, I wanted to obviously keep this Japanese theme, and also keep the theme that describes what these Pokémon are, especially in relation to the God-Emperor-like Pokémon that they are going to become. They obviously gained that Emperor status when they were revived by Ho-Oh, so in their more diminutive state, they are going to have other things that describe them instead. For example, Raikoshi's name, in addition to coming from the prefix Rai, also comes from the word Sukoshi, which means little in Japanese. However, this term means little as in quantity, as in a little of something. So the name roughly translates to a little bit of thunder or a little bit of Raiko, which in my opinion fits really well because that's essentially what this Pokemon is. Likewise, Anashi's name comes from the term Meatarashi, which can mean new, novel, or original. And this one I feel like is pretty ingenious, because the name can translate as original flame or original entei, which it obviously is, but the term original in this context is referring to something that is really original, as in really new. So you could also say that this name means new flame or new entei, which is also true because this is a new version of this Pokemon that hypothetically would be introduced somewhere down the road years after the original. I'm no expert on the Japanese language or anything by any means, but personally, I feel like that fits really, really well. And finally, for Suirashi's name, it comes from Sui as in Suicune as in water, but also the word Mezurashi, which means rare or unusual, which describes this Pokemon as obviously being rare and unusual because that's exactly what it is. When it comes to Suirashi's name in particular though, there is another reason why I opted for using this kind of word to fit in this name. Number one, for good measure, I wanted to use it because it makes Suirashi's name a three-syllable name, just like Enashi and Raikoshi, so they all have three-syllable names, just like Entei, Suicune, and Raiko all have two-syllable names. Additionally, I specifically I specifically chose Mezurashi as the root word for Suirashi's name because it ends in she, just like Enashi and Raikoshi. And I did this not only to tie all of these Pokemon together as a group, but also because the suffix in this case, she, is also a standalone word in the Japanese language which means death. And this is meant to be an homage, or a sign of things to come, if you will, for the ultimate fate of these Pokémon, which is obviously that they die in the burning of the Burned Tower. So ultimately, I feel like these names actually came together pretty well. They were kind of difficult to put together with having to lean on a lot of Japanese terminology, but I feel like I was able to come up with something that worked. And I feel like with the names combined with the designs, which I've said are also really cool in my opinion, this just shows why these Pokemon need to actually exist, why we need to be able to see them, and why they should actually be brand new Pokemon. So. 
Here's hoping somewhere down the road, maybe in a Pokemon Legends Johto game, we'll eventually get to see these extremely iconic, yet completely unknown, Pokemon. With that said though, I now of course want to know what you guys think. Do you like these designs? Do you like the ideas I've put behind them? And which one is your favorite? Be sure to let me know all of that in the comments below, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more if you're new. With that said, I'll be back with another new video very soon, and until then, as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really really appreciate it, and I... We'll smell you guys later.